I was thinking, why isn't there a singular event that covers it all? And it's non-pretentious, and it's easy access, that you can just come and talk to people and casual, you know, learning things from different perspectives. What's going on everybody, the Fun Bros here. We are in Singapore at Culture Cartel. This is the largest street culture convention in all of Southeast Asia. We're talking about sneakers, streetwear, local brands, designers, toys, tattoos, everything that relates to it. Today we are gonna be speaking to different artists, different owners of different booths, and we are gonna be asking them, one, how is street culture developing in this region? And number two, since so many kids nowadays are wanting to get into the professional arts, what is the best piece of advice they can give to young aspiring artists? Artists like yourselves. Guys, there's a lot to find out and there's a lot to unpack. We're at Culture Cartel 2019. Let's go. The first floor of the event had a lot of booths from major brands, from Mercedes to New Balance to Puma and more. Oh! For me, the coolest part was having a dunk off with Andrew in front of a crowd and meeting a pro streetball player from the Philippines. Shout out to Hype Streetball from the Philippines. Representing Puma. Oh, he got some fits. Then there's the food and performance hall. Obviously being in Asia, but having formerly been a British colony, Singapore has a lot of East meets West fusion foods. There was beef rendang tacos, mixing Malay cuisine with Mexican, Tamago Japanese egg sandwiches, shabu beef and ahi tuna bagels, and even salted egg yolk mac and cheese. But my favorite food discovery at Culture Cartel Com was the Pipa Gao Boba. Pipa Gao is actually a honey medicine drink from Hong Kong. And I remember drinking it all the time when my grandparents came over but I never imagined it tastes so good in the bowl. Oh, that's good! I gotta give a shout out to Wubi. And we're in Singapore discovering, and Singapore's not really known for boba, is that true? No, no, it's not. And this is one of the best bobas I've ever had in my entire life. Pandan, gula malacca, coconut. Pandan, gula malacca, on coconut. Day, on day, on day. Wow. I'll tell you this, that is easily better than the hotel pancakes. Don't sleep on gula malacca. On day. Pandan souffle pancake with the gula malacca. That is the one. Check this out, guys. Fresh tamago. You got bonito flakes. You have Japanese mayo. All on his toasted bread. My mom used to make a sandwich at home. It was an egg sandwich. It was just mayo and egg. This reminds me a lot about it. Cool Malay Mexican fusion. Let's do that. That is good. And that thing, that is the best Asian fusion taco I've ever had. Yo, you guys gotta come out to Singapore, see what they're doing out here. It's crazy. That is a liver taco. Balado, I guess, is a sauce, and then this is a liver taco, so. That is the best liver I've ever had. Yeah? Yo, we might have to put the camera on. John just trying the rendang taco. Oh. It didn't taste like liver at all. Meaty, delicious. Can't go wrong with a fried fridge taco. Shout out to this tortilla. This is one of the best tortillas. I thought this was pretty cool that Skechers has like free slushies. Oh, lychee. I knew it was Asian. It's really sweet. It's really good. It does taste like lychee, but more like the lychee jellies. This very aesthetic bagel house called Bagel House caught my eye. I'm hungry because I'm looking at all the colors and colors make me hungry. What do you guys call this creation? Yeah. Love, man. Here at Culture Cartel Con, it's not just street culture, but it's also food culture. Ooh. Wow. The yuzu ahi tuna, Andrew, it comes together well. Real kind. If that is, that's shabu shabu beef. Yeah? Four and a half out of five. Crazy rap performance going on right now. But the Naughty Boys, which is a uh, boutique kind of hipster mac and cheese stall, they also do pancakes, had to drop off original spicy insulted egg yolk mac and cheese. Oh, let's start with the original. Wow, look how milky this is. That's pretty good. It's really thick, a little salty. Just try the spicy one, bro. Okay, immediately. I like that one better. Last but not least, Andrew, the salted egg yolk mac and cheese. I like it. It tastes like golden duck as a mac and cheese. What have you seen here at this convention so far? A lot of energy, man. A lot of young kids, uh, all types of sneakers that they're wearing. They're coming in with Yeezys, Jordans, a lot of hunger for, for, for wear. Any other market, they just want the product. 
but in the Asian market, they really care about the artist and the creator, and that's that's what's really cool about this region. Culture Cartel Con was not just another sneaker event. Obviously, there was a lot of skate, art, tattoos, food, fashion, everything that you just can't learn about during school hours. But of course, guys, we love to talk about sneakers. You gotta be a sneakerhead to appreciate the subtlety of the Slam Jam Blazers, Andrew. Class. Yo, these are fire. This is my favorite all white Air Force One to come out in a really long time. Clot Air Force One, they said that they're done putting the Chinese, traditional Chinese patterns on sneakers after this. I thought this one actually turned out pretty well. I don't really like a lot of them, man, but this one was cool. It's getting hot in here, there's so much heat. If you guys do not know, and you guys are wondering why there's boost on this Reebok shoe right now, you have to understand that Adidas bought Reebok in 2006. This okay. shoe, the DMX Fury, is like one of the most popular sneakers in Asia. We're talking ever. about the year like 2001. Yeah, yeah, way back then. Personally, you know, I don't own a pair. I, I, I never have, but I wouldn't be opposed to wearing it with boost now. You guys are uh, an app marketplace for sneakers focused on Asia. And you guys are doing legit checks and all this stuff? We're doing all that stuff to make sure that you don't buy fakes. That's why we're doing the real versus fake comparison right here. Here's why I think the left one is real. I think this tag right here, the DPI is better here. And then this one, I can't even tell what that R is. Usually on the fake pairs, some of the stitching and the cutting is a little bit frayed. Essentially to the untrained eye, you can't tell. But when they cut it on the fake pairs, just, it's a little bit more raw and crude. All right, well, you've made your bet. We were thinking, what's the coolest sneaker ever? And we figured, well, why don't we make the coolest sneakers ever made by freezing them in a giant block of ice? They think it different here in Singapore, man. What's so special about your uh, shoe cleaner, man? For our product, right, it's uh, so-called chemical-free. So we make use of uh, lemon oil, coconut oil. By using this, okay, with the microfiber tower, it can just uh, simply just wipe it off. Okay, without under the sun or running through water. It's a made in Taiwan product. Hey, hey, this ain't Jason Mark, bro. It's Jason Lin. We have John behind the camera. He's going to get his Yeezys cleaned real quick. John's played basketball in his Yeezys. He's traveled in his Yeezys. Feeling like a million bucks. Just his left shoe, though. May, can you yes. tell him real quick? who you are, what you do. Well, I'm an influencer. Um, I kind of meddle a little bit in the fashion industry, okay. some retail stuff, uh, and I just launched a new Netflix show on Singapore Social, so check it out. Crazy. How, how would you describe like street culture in Singapore? The nice thing about Singapore is that we are kind of a mel melting pot of all different cultures. We are really young. So, you know, we have a lot of things that we are inspired by the outside cultures, like, you know, Western and Eastern culture from China or from US. So you kind of see that in the style, we kind of mix and match. We see a lot of different kind of variations of style. We are here with Fat Man Scoop, hip hop legend. You've been around for so long, you know, you've seen hip hop develop and organically grow. And now we're in a region where it's almost still in the early stages. How do you see it organically developing here? You're at ground zero. And this is before the big corporations come in and try to take it over. So it's just good to see the culture. All of these cool people together trying to elevate the culture to another level is nothing short of amazing. Yo, what's going on guys? I'm here with the world famous Stash and Crash. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, love them. Yeah. You're here in Singapore. It's gonna take a life of its own and go, but the basics are always gonna be there. So a tree is a tree, but there's different types of trees. That's the how the foundation is yeah. built, so yeah. you can do anything yeah. off of it. When hip hop first started in, in New York City, it was all about party, everyone say oh, everyone have a good time. And then it went through a, an era where everyone needed to have beef, everyone wanted to have enemies, and there was a lot of violence and gangster rap was born, and the same thing reflected on the subway trains. And then the subway trains died. Now, it has gone worldwide, and in some countries, you only get the artwork and the dance and the music and everyone's happy. In Europe, they appreciate artwork so much more. But here, I don't know what the culture is like. So hopefully you guys will only import the good stuff, the fun, the beauty, and not the violence, not the vandalism, and not the ugliness that sometimes accompanies this sort of artwork. So, so far the vibe in this place is just awesome. Hype culture meets foreign culture. Hype non-chicken. Not high non-chicken. <laughs> Let's just walk 
us through what you're doing here because you're mixing a lot of uh, sort of like what national fast foods. Not, nothing too serious, nothing too ironic. We just like, we just like to have fun. Indomimigoreng figurines. We see the hype. And then we got hype non chicken too, right? Man, hey, this, then, is, wait, man. this is the roast hype non chicken and this is the white. Yes, right. Yeah, we are launching this it. at this show. This is okay. the first time you are seeing it. All right, can you guys explain the thinking behind the hype non chicken? We were hungry as hell. What to do? Ta-da. So this is like, a, it's the size, this is He Man size. It will fit in with the old school He Man figures. So we're like, what can we do? What's popular in Singapore? Hainan chicken. We're hungry. Then we just started sculpting and this came, this came out. Yeah. This is really creative and I love this villain section here. It's really funny because it's kind of personifying all these things that are outlawed in Singapore that are not outlawed in many other countries. Professor Gum. Uh, well, tell us about Chop Shop. Chop Shop is by Diplomat. Diplomat is a group of uh, artists where we do like illustrations and stuff. And then on our free time, because we have a day job, uh, we make it into stickers, uh, we make it into t-shirts and stuff like this, and we try to sell them. Okay, so you guys were doing this piece for Adidas, and then this piece for Nike. I just got bored and I want to draw some Gundam and then add some skulls because I just like skulls. And then we just put it on a t-shirt. So it's kind of like a mashup, huh? Yeah. All right, we are here with Murfin, an artist from Spain. Yeah, yeah. hello, my name is Murfin. What is the inspiration be behind your art, man? So, well, what he does is a spray paint, a later acrylic, and with uh, color pencils. So, actually, in Europe, uh, hyperrealism is now very strong, but in Asia, it will still take some time to come. So what do you think for the kids out there? They want to do what you just did, but for whatever reason, they're just not. It's not flowing. What, what's your best piece of advice so they can break through those mental barriers and be like you and be make dope art? I mean, I can't give you advice that you don't already know, right? If you know what you want to do, then do, do it. You. Do it. Then do it. We did it. It's not all about talent. It's fifty percent talent, fifty percent business. And those people that fade away is those that don't know how to do business don't know how to sell themselves, market themselves. People have ideas all the time, but execution, you know, that's rare. Not everything will work out. People respond well to certain figures, but they won't respond so well to them. We just keep doing it until you know, we, we see the result that way. Also, I think the key is simple. You don't have to take it so seriously. You don't have to make it like so edgy or so like freaking perfect and new. There's nothing like that. You just gotta be authentic. You know, you just gotta be true to yourself and really represent and your intention of why you're doing the brand has to really stand out. A lot of times I think people just want to do it for the sake of doing it. I think now consumers are really smart so you can't just do a brand just out of that. You, you know, you gotta have respect for them as well and then it will return back to you. Mi consejo es que sigan trabajando. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. The thing with Instagram is now like everybody has a great window to the world. Don't listen to anybody, just keep doing it. Everybody have gone through the struggle. People, everybody at the top have gone through the struggle. So you have to struggle first, man. Brick by brick, layer by layer. Right, we're a space-inspired clothing brand from Indonesia. Our brand's about this guy named Vlad. Is he part of the Russian space program? Yeah, so that's why, hence the name Cosmonauts. Why space? Just like limitless imagination that we haven't like kind of explored it and anything could happen so who's to say that there's no aliens or whatever pyramids in space and all the designs that we do you know who's to say that they don't exist somewhere out there what do you think it is about indonesia man right now it seems like it, you know just over the past few years it really announced itself to the world as almost like a, a very free-spirited pop cultural hub of southeast asia and i don't think anybody fully expected it um to be honest there's a lot of really creative people out there in Indonesia and um, we haven't really been exposed to the rest of the world yet, you know, and it's really good that people are really taking it on now and um, all these creative people are getting out there. So that's really exciting. So hopefully we'll, we'll start to emerge more out there and be more recognized throughout the whole world. Jaslyn, what are we looking at behind us? Uh, it's actually uh, an art installation, so everybody actually gets to participate in this. Ah! <laughs> but great job, David. You are part of the artwork. She said her goal was to recreate that feeling of childlike spontaneity. And guess what? I felt it. Do you want to do it? She called it second childhood. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go spray the dinosaur. Abel, you guys are a retail store here in Singapore. Uh, you guys carry other brands, but you also carry your own brand. Our own brand is called uh, Lucky N. It's really about uh, Oriental, you know, Chinese, uh, Asians going out from Asia into the rest of the world, and that's how we ended up in Singapore as well. Yeah. 
and also Lucky and his extension of that. You know, we, we still have our family gatherings, our gambling that we really love, and our food. So that's what this brand is about. Is this Lao Fuzi? It's an inspiration from Lao Fuzi, yes. All right, this is Lao Fuzi. This is a character in Lao Fuzi. Yeah. You see a lot of this in, uh, you know, where you can have your hair haircut. The little kids will have this book, okay, you want to fidget around, here's a book for you to read. So this is something that we grew up with. Okay, what is this? What are we looking at? It's a reversible kimono with a hoodie. Oh, there's oh, a hoodie, hoodie kimono. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's reversible. Wow. Wow. The silk inside. David actually just got a big kimono the other day. So you got, David's kind of on a kimono wave right now. Come out to the fight like this. For me, I'm not the biggest bear break expert. Shout out to Medicom, but um, my favorite bear bricks, I, I'm more into the design of the bear brick rather than what it represents. So for example, I love these uh, because they're shiny, the Darumas. And for me, obviously the other ones that really catch my eye is really this uh, Jean Miguel Basquiat. R.I.P. to Basquiat. But uh, I actually really like this Mickey Minagawa one too. Hey, hey, nice to meet you, David. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Can you tell us a little bit what is Obot and what are you guys trying to accomplish? It's a vintage toys with a new twist of a contemporary art fashion. You were saying the heart of the robot can always be switched out, yeah, right? right? So whoever's controlling the robot, for example, that, that has a panda controlling right. a cat. Usually the, the one who control are the one with smarter. Oh. Uh, yeah. Especially there, that we have this, uh, we call it a happy clown. So this is he's what? He's controlled by the devil, and then he, he lure the kids to come and eat more happy meal. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hey man, you said it. I'm, I'm pro happy McDonald's. I'm Yo, gonna... I feel like... No, 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 this is not McDonald's. This is whatever. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm with Appa Yang Fresh from Joho Baru. So uh, can you tell us about your guys' art? Yeah, uh, I mostly do mural art, but slowly tapping into graffiti. So I usually draw flowers around town. I love other types of graffiti too, but it doesn't. Sometimes you look at it, if you if you don't understand that world, you just like I don't know what it is, right? But though everybody know what you're doing. Yeah, I hope so. But actually, to be honest, I'm just gonna give it a go with whatever I do. The most important thing is just to have fun with it. Even though some people might say, "Oh, this ain't graffiti," but then again. I'm just doing what I love, that's all. All right, you guys, we are here at an exhibition by Andre Tan. He mixes a lot of pop culture and high-end sort of brands together. Like, look here, Chief Wiggums from uh, The Simpsons. Yep. First of all, he has funny eyes. He's got the Louis monogram print. Gucci coffee cup. This is trippy. A lot of stuff going on. And then there's Chanel in the background. This is one of my favorite booths. This is has some really cool artwork here. I, I think for me, art really needs to have an accessible entry point for people to even get into it. And you know, Andrew, we used to live in the Lower East Side. There were so many different art galleries. And some of this stuff is so abstract, it's difficult to sink your teeth into. This is easy to sink your teeth into. This is pop art. Pop art using pop culture. It's generally easier to enjoy. Um, and understand, at least on a shallow level. We're here with Joanna from Karcher Cartel. What we want people to take away from the event is something new. We don't want people to come here, see what they usually like, and just take home that. We want them to learn new things. Um, if you're into sneakers, great. Come here and learn more about art, learn more about tattoos, learn more about Anything else that uh, on top of the things that you're here to see, it goes beyond product. You're not just selling the product. You're selling the minds behind who designed the shoes or who designed the clothing or who's the artist behind the collaboration. You're learning all of those things. I'm Dave. I'm one of the co-founders of Culture Cartel. Guys, check out every year in December where and when Culture Cartel is happening and hope you guys can come down and take a look and experience yourself firsthand. If you were to go to a singular con, if you are a geek, Walking through a con, you'll be judged at because you don't have any tattoos on you or your dressing is wrong. But right now, you can see all sorts of people going through. You have families, you have young kids, some rocking expensive sneakers, some rocking, you know, rocking boots even. There's no comparison. Without comparison, there's nothing to pretend. And egos are put aside. You just want to learn. Passion is its simplest form. And I think it's just cool to see like 
people care about street culture but then still care about being Asian. I think like in the West, a lot of us, when we are born and raised there, it's pretty much you're gonna pick one or the other. It's like you're either gonna speak your parents' language but then you're just gonna become a doctor or a lawyer or you're gonna reject being Asian and you're gonna go into the street culture or whatever subculture your parents don't approve of. And it's like, this is gonna be one or the other but then here I see people do both. Yo. Thank you so much for watching that video here on Culture Cartel 2019 here Ooh. in Singapore. This whole scene for street culture in this region, Southeast Asia, Singapore, is really, really on its way up. Obviously, because it's a new culture to the region, yeah. there's a ton of room for opportunity. Yeah. And I think that that gap is gonna be filled up in a unique way, its own distinct version. They have a good starting point right now. They're starting pure, they're starting with the culture, they're starting with understanding and teaching and learning, and that's the best way to start. One last thing, if you're gonna visit Singapore, I say come during one of these like big conventions that gives you something to do. Listen, the food here is good and it's always here though. But stuff like this, it only happens, you know, a few times a year. Shout out to everybody who showed so much love. Shout out to everybody that was in the video. And just thank you so much for watching. Guys, if you like that video, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. Click subscribe, hit the notifications. Um, let us know in the comments below what you took away from the video because it was really long. There was a lot to say. And then also, tell us somewhere else or some other event that you know that we should check out. Let us know in the comment section below. And until next time, you guys, we're in Singapore. We're out. Peace. Hey, yo, DJ. Can you turn the music up? Oh, how did that feel? You have the power.